and I'm a publisher in Eastern Massachusetts. Um, let's go on to Matthew. Do you want to I just give a, your short uh, Very quickly, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a writer and publisher in Western Massachusetts, uh, and yeah, I'm very glad to be here, joining for the first time. Very intrigued by the project. Kyle. Hello, my name is Kyle, and I'm a student at New College of Florida and a copywriter for a marketing firm. Good. Uh, George? Um, I'm George Brett, and I'm in Falls Church, Virginia, and um, uh, basically spent a long time on the internet supporting people, teaching people. Um, everything from K-12 through higher ed, libraries and such, and um, Excellent. jack of all trades and master of none. And a faithful and longtime editor of the Piragaji Handbook. Okay. Um, uh, Charlie, and then we'll go to Joe. Do you just... <coughs> he says be right back. Okay. All right, Joe, you're it. <laughs> Um, do, you have so, a, do you have a lower third or not? Sorry, not not right now. I'll get come up with one later. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so hi, I'm, I'm Joe. Um, and yeah, with Charlie a long time ago now, we came up with this thing called Paragogy, which is kind of the, the precursor to Pyragogy. And um, yeah, I am finishing a PhD in England. Um, should be finished real soon now, and uh, and it has a lot to do with what we've been doing here, um, and also with mathematics. So those are kind of some of my things. Have they called you for your defense yet? Uh, December seventeenth will be my date. So. Whoa, what? Wow! Wow! Yeah. Cool. Ooh, it's close. Woohoo! Um, Paula has joined us. Yay! Hello. How is your daughter's birthday? <laughs> Great. <laughs> How old is she? Uh, six years old. Oh my gosh! Wow! Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Wait till she gets to be thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> like mine. <laughs> well, it's different between mothers and, and fathers. Well, I, think I didn't mind the teenage years at all. My wife did. <laughs> well, my son was a dream, and then I, I was dreaming until she hit thirteen. But. Yeah. Right. Okay. But they're in their thirties now, so everybody's still sort of friendly. And uh, well, although now that, we've uh, talked, now that we've talked over you, Paulo, could you you want to introduce yourself? That's, uh, that's good. That was a good example of pure gadget there. That was like parenting pure gadget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I warned her. Um, yeah. Um, Paula. Uh, well, the case study. Sorry, sorry. No, so I just wanted to say hello. <laughs> I'm Paula. I'm from Ecuador. I live. I teach here at a private university, and that's what city? <laughs> what city is it? Mexico City. Mexico City. Okay. And Matthew uh, Herschler is our new, just joining us from Western Mass. Great. Very nice to meet you all. Yeah. As in Massachusetts. You're it, Joe. Um, okay. So, um, oh, by the way, I, I spent the last week in Finland at this really interesting school, like a short week-long school of uh, computational creativity. So, um, whatever the heck that is, it's something that I think we do, although we're not computers, but we sure do some creativity stuff well. So, okay, so let me introduce to you this this document I put in the chat. Um, for anyone who joined late, I will put it again. Um, and I think everyone should have permission to edit that. Um, is uh, Ray on, on the pirate pad? Or, or? I haven't seen a word from Ray. Uh, okay. He may have given up because... because uh, I don't hear back from him yet, but we'll get him next week, maybe. Um, so, um, or I'll, I'll take another break from this, and we can invite him invite him later on. But anyway, so this this document came out of I joined um, this thing called a collaborative exploration at. Uh, let's see, can we edit this thing? I'm not yeah, sure I think can. so. That you do think so? Um, 
bring it up within the oh, wait. tools. I mean, if you, within the Hangout itself, you should be able to do that. Okay. If you bring it up within the drive on the left. Might not be shared yet. Um, I don't see it. Supposed yeah. to be shared. Public well, I've got up. shares, but they're not anybody who's in the Hangout currently. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, okay. you did it again. Golly. Did it again. It did. Uh, Oops, I did it again. Okay, but anyway, let me tell you about it. We can figure out the technical details later. So th this came out of, uh, I joined this thing called a collaborative exploration, which seemed like a very pure like thing. And it was led by these people at, gosh, University of Massachusetts, Boston, right there with all these Massachusetts people. Um, Peter Taylor was kind of one of the main leads. Um, and he wrote this. He's kind of, I think he's on the faculty there. And then someone else named um, Terrell wrote a lot of very interesting uh, things, which I don't have here. Um, and basically, I've asked her to send her stuff this week, um, but I'm hoping that we can just look over what's here now. Uh, basically, what they do with these collaborative explorations is people join online and discuss a topic. So I would say it's a little bit like uh, structured pedagogy or whatever. And so it may be quite interesting to people who teach to think, thanks, George, uh, who teach and who um, request access. I need permission. Uh, request access. Um, anyway, OK, so we can try that one. Someone here has got a Neon cap. I, I just made it public, so okay. anybody right. should be able to open it right now, and then I'll, I'll close it to us later. Is that OK, uh, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. But this one says view only. Really? Yeah. I got edit. Hang on a second. Charlie's special. OK. Uh, anyway, so basically, I hope you guys are catching what I'm saying, that this, this is good for kind of a, um, a pedagogical pedagogy, if, 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 you, if you take, what, take my meaning. Like, you're a te you're, let's say you're a teacher, or, or maybe we could do it as a theme. Uh, like, you know, if we wanted to organize one of these things and we said, hey, we're going to collaboratively pick a topic, and we'll, we'll walk through it um, step by step. And it, it's a bit more structured than a typical than our typical meetings. Like it comes with the syllabus and stuff like that. But all in all, it seems great, and it does seem like an example of, of pure learning and pureagogy. Although I don't think they were directly inspired by us, it it's a complement to the uh, the thing by David Preston, I would say, because this is mainly for adults. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, he's working for young adults. Um, and so this piece is more theory, and Terrell's piece is, which is on the way, is more practice. But my concern is that this thing is about eight, six or eight pages long right now, and there's a lot of these bullet points. So when we do have edit access, I would suggest we delete all of the bullet points and see what's left. Um, or, or do something like that and try to get this down to... Well, maybe should we just uh, copy it into a new document? Is that oh, okay? we, we that's just what did, I did. We just did, but it, it still, still needs the permission to be changed somehow. No, I, I, I just changed it. My apologies. Okay, okay. no, 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 no big deal. We're just reloading. Just reload and see if it works. Yep, we're back, and now we're finally in working order. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So, but yeah, we might want a separate one for outtakes or something, or just maybe move outtakes below to the bottom. Let's do so that. So we should all go on that chat and use George's latest link. Do we? Right. Do we want to rename it? Maybe. This is this is okay. We're good for now. I think. I mean, we can if you want to, but uh, outtakes below. <laughs> this I'm one of these kind of people. I do things like this. Dash zero one. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So that's, we can make 99 versions. <laughs> that's up to 99. I always wondered how to keep track of, yeah. Uh, well, if you put the zero in first and you sort it alphabetically, then they right. chronologically. Very good. See, Matt, do you think you could put your um, contact information in the chat? I, 
since you don't have. Uh, uh, yeah, I just click here and then write like as in as in uh, what's what is my contact information like email address stuff like that. Or email, phone, social right. security number, credit card. Numbers. Yeah, right. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay. No. Okay. Uh, uh, I think I'm on. Uh, I guess I'll put my Gmail address. That would help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So I'm I'm just slowly removing things that to me look excessive like excessive bullet points, um, and I think the the main question for you all, having shown up and for your first pyragogy learning thing, is okay. We can critique this and comment on do we is it something we would really want to do, etc. But I think our main job as editors is to just make it look. Like relatively one. readable. In fact, now that I've gotten rid of the bullet points, I'm much happier. So, so I guess we yeah. can kind of look. It's a little hard it. for me not having read it yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't really read it myself. So, so maybe we want to just take some time to. But I've edited things before on the on the fly. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm I mean, having a hard time entering. It says I'm having a hard time entering anything in this comment zone. Okay, go click on the very top box on the left on the top. Uh, the. There, there's a little chat box. Yeah, I got that'll, it. Okay. That'll open yeah, up okay. the chat, and then there, there will be a box that you can type into on the save, lower reset, right. Custom load. I just save. Uh, I'm just going to try this. If uh, you roll your yeah. cursor over to the left side of the screen, it'll Oh, out. got it. Over, open up chat. Got it. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this looks right. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, and I forgot to grab the chat last time. Did anybody happen to do that? <clears throat> no. Yes, I did. You oh. did. George, you're so <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> um, okay, so so I, I would say maybe we can just look at the lead, you know, and make sure that we get some idea of what this thing is talking about from this first paragraph. And if, and if not, then we could edit it. And if we have to move on... I don't even think we should necessarily take the whole time. I agree. We haven't read it yet, so let's not take too much time on this. There's other things we can do. Okay, so he's set up this email, by the way. Here's the Ray email, Charlotte, so we can get him in the conversation. Um, And I don't know if there's other are there other things that we want to cover in addition to this document because we could go in, right into that, or there may be other points of business we need to cover too. Did you read the blurb that Bowen sent? Who sent it? Bowen sent the blurb. Oh, Bowen. Yeah, I did see that. It looked good. It looks quotable. Good. Who got in touch with them? Is that you, Paula? I can hear you. Yeah, it was her, but yeah, your mic, you're so quiet. Sorry, oh. sorry, sorry. Paula, that's awesome. Oh, good job, good. Paula. Thank you. Um, well, I'll try to meet him in January in Ecuador. Oh, very cool. Are you, are you gonna, is the, for that, like, flock-like thing? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, we might want to get him very a, good. A, a print copy of, of the book by that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, oh, yeah so that's a good idea. Two. Yeah. So I have a... be ready for yeah. that time. Really nice. Um, yep, yeah, he's the first respondent. Everyone else got scared off. Um, Kyle, did you get any, <laughs> any luck from the new college people? Not yet, but uh, I'm going to push him again pretty much over uh, the Thanksgiving break and over winter break as well because I think they're all really busy right now. Yeah, but I'm sure, also seeing sure. my uh, boss, uh, who's one of the people at the writing center that I'm um, hoping can contribute, and I I will be seeing him tomorrow so I can uh, follow up. Cool. Wonderful. Yep, that sounds good. Is uh, this more reviewers? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, so did you see I sent I put in here uh, Ray's email. Let's see if we can get him. Yeah, here. if you can email him, I'm just, I'm trying to invite him. Okay. Okay. I'll email him. Might not work this time. But... Um, okay. Um, Charlie, did you get any feedback from people? No, not yet. I've, Jim Groom and David Wiley said they were going to get back to me, but they haven't. Okay. Um, that sounds I lucked out. Possibly promising. Well, Jim Groom actually responded with a yes to me. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. Did he give you, like, um, specific feedback? Yeah. No. Okay. Did, I would mentioned the December uh, issue to him. So I heard back from Bonnie Bracey Sutton, and what was interesting about her response is, you know, initially it was sort of ho-hum, but then she took a look at it, and she said, holy moly, this is fantastic. Wow. And, um wanted to know if she could share the word with a, a number of conferences she'll be working with. Um, she said, uh, da -da -da -da. Um, I can't find it. George, once again, you're out producing everyone. I know. Well, anyway, and then Laura Bree, who uh, <laughs> was with the... Um, uh, Department of Commerce mm -hmm. and dealing with uh, broadband technologies for uh, the unwashed masses. <laughs> uh, she initially said she had the flu and couldn't manage it and then wrote back and said she'll try and get something to us by the middle of uh, um, December. Okay. Here's, here's Bonnie's statement. Uh, she says, wow, I found Howard somewhere in California. Beautifully painted shoes. I didn't know at the time he, who he was, and we had the best conversation. I love this book. I love the ideas. Do you want me to distribute it to anyone or demonstrate it? And she also says, I am a new Adobe Education Advisory member. There are only 10 of us. I could preview it with the educators. Wow! Nice. Yeah, I yeah, do yeah, get sure. a TED. I do get a TED kind of talk. This is perfect, but I don't have to share it if you're keeping it under wraps. I'm oh. so sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Share, Far from share, it. Share, share away. <laughs> yeah, well, I was thinking about because she's in my area, in Northern Virginia, in D.C., of uh, ordering two copies from Lulu, one for myself, and then hand carrying one over to her. That's a good Maybe. idea. Uh, we're, um, up to, we're up to date with the Lulu one, right, Charlie? Because I have to make those fixes. 1.13. One one that, that's the good one? Yeah, that's on Yeah, we're up to date with Lulu. 1.31. Yeah. 1.31, one one one. One, I think it is now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, need, I need to talk to you maybe separately about the logistics of getting on Lightning Source because they'll need uh, ISBN and um, uh. publishing name and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and what I from what I understand about Amazon is it's it's like we kind of want it to be perfect when we put it there because it's supposed to be a royal pain to change it. Yeah. So I, I would suggest we sort of do that once a year, even right. if it's completely flawed, and we do the keep doing the minor versions on Lulu because apparently it's a royal pain with Amazon. Well, Amazon is kind of like the first time is the worst. Okay. They, there's a lot of stuff they'll reject you for. Okay. And Charlie, I'm, and, and Paul, I'm, I'm very sorry about not doing the reading bit that I suggested. Oh, uh, that's fine. Well, uh, that's fine. So, stuff happens. Yeah. That's uh, part, uh, of the, part of the pedagogical experience. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, Charlie, do we'll you, have, out. you want to keep this under your publishing umbrella, or do you mind if I take it under mine? Or should we start a Pyragogy one? Um, any of those are okay. Um, Why well, you guys? You guys could jointly publish it. Well, I could do a I could do an imprint of Pierce Press's 
you know, Piragaji books or something. Right, right, right. Um, and everybody could have a, uh, the whole editorial team could have a, a share of the lucrative proceeds. That's an yeah. interesting proposition. Um, I've just been keeping all the proceeds for myself this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> funding my wild, funding my, my, my wild lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Um, all, all those thinkers bars. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, you guys have no idea. Um, yeah, we can, I mean, do you have, I have, I have ISBNs already purchased, um, I don't know if you have that or not, or if, um, like I, I, donated, some, I, yeah. I donated the one last year, so yeah, if you want to donate it, we could do that, that's fine. We should, uh, use the same one as already, as we're already using, though. No, it's second edition, she's a different one. Mm-mm. I think you guys should talk about this off, off, yeah, okay. offline because it sounds extremely technical. ISBNs, lightning source code, what is all that? Ooh, yeah. Well, you can get technical too. Uh, I know, but I do. I do that in private. Actually, yeah. I need to. I need to do that. I'm really into this latex thing, but anyway. So. Oh God. <laughs> that when are you going to do I mean, the yeah. workshop? No, it's C-H. On latex. It's latex. I believe, okay. I believe it's pronounced latex, by the way. <laughs> or latex, whatever. I latte. haven't heard of that. Joe's the math geek. He's the one the that's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. No, I have I have work to do with that. Maybe even later tonight. I will. Joe's but, supposed um, to be giving workshops on latex. I should. Nice. I should. Um, okay, well, I'll try to do that one thing that I can, I can reconstruct as a workshop. But I, okay, why don't we why don't we try to do our little editing thing with this paragraph here, this paragraph, and see if we've learned anything from this Peter Taylor graduate program collaborative exploration thing. Um, Matthew, did you get the document? Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay. I, I have been sort of. It's a it's a really long first sentence. It yeah. is. Does it even e ever end? No. <laughs> okay. He studied with Faulkner. Okay. So let's let's fix Curse that over here. Right, participants. Thank you. That well spotted. It may still be too long, but I also don't really like acronyms actually. Mm-hmm. I second that. At least on the first sentence. That's the new guy. Yeah. Um, that doesn't have to be capitalized. Do you? Really? Okay, good. That's a good change. Yeah, you're thinking like so. Problem with this sentence, though, is I don't actually know what project-based learning is or related approaches. So I think this first sentence is going to need yeah, some. Yeah, it's oh, awkward. Um, I think we might need a complete rewrite of that first sentence because I, I I sat in on one and I I didn't come away feeling like that. Um, Contribution to the pedagogy handbook combines practical information about how to online part of it that happens, and then links are provided for the, for the details. Okay. I don't know. I don't. I don't having again since I've I've sat in on one. Maybe you guys could ask me questions about it or something. But um, I think maybe we need some factual things like who runs them, what are they. And why should we care? Well, the other question I have here is that the overview and contrast of connectivist MOOCs. Mm. I mean, he's actually to me he's throwing in kind of two methodologies there. I don't know that a MOOC is necessarily connectivist. Mm. No, that's well. There's C MOOCs. It's definitely a part of the MOOC literature, C MOOCs connect versus X MOOCs. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> could you uh, could you describe how this started? How the how a subject was or of inquiry was shaped or determined or inter you know how Thank you. Yeah. So in, in the one I sat in on uh, they came up with it. This is at this graduate program. So, as part of the graduate program, program, um, they come up. I'm going to do this very informally with 
uh, topics um, and themes. Um, for instance, mine was something like uh, scaffolding to support creative problem solving or something like that. Very good. Um, and 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 then uh, and they set a schedule. So, but the schedule is very it's very loose. They basically say things like they want, they want to make sure everyone gets a chance to speak every time. Um, and everyone gets feedback on what they talk about. And then some of the other reflections are, are more uh, the, this project-based learning thing. To me, it seemed a little um, a little hard to grapple with. They, they describe it as a case. They describe uh, problems are described as a case. But, but it's that, not project based. It's problem based. Oh yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Good. I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I, it's I, I'm lost. PBL. It's problem based learning. Yeah. Okay. So let's change that. <laughs> uh, I. That sounds good. I mean, it could be both. I don't know. Project problem. I'm not sure. Uh, mm. Problem. Based. I think project. It's project oriented learning. It's P O L. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, this is maybe you shouldn't go in the first sentence, but just to get the ideas across, problem-based learning. Uh, maybe that would be a footnote. That's potent. I just want to say that phrase is very practical, uh, very potent. Okay. Yeah, well, I like it uh, a little better. Well, I don't know, but I think these are two different techniques or two different te uh, methodologies. Project-based yeah. learning is one, and then problem-based learning is other. Okay. Well, we'll go with we'll go with problem-based because I, I feel like that I deal a little better with that. But since they use this acronym, then we'll never know what they meant. They may mean the other one, but we'll have to fix it. Um, Google it. <laughs> I mean, well, usually PBL is problem-based learning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, that that makes a little bit more sense to me. But what they describe it in terms of is uh, projects or problems. Because are phrased as a case. Yes, yes, that's the point. Case. Yes. Um, uh, for instance, how can we scaffold learning uh, to support creativity? <clears throat> um, and and so you know, you, um, so people check in about individual and group progress. As the CE progresses, as the CE develops, so that that was my experience, and, and I, that that that's kind of um, that's just me extemporaneously blathering about it. Um, I think some of this other stuff that they're talking about here maybe is useful, going a little bit more in depth. Um, I I do think it would be very interesting to think about how um, how we could use this in the Pyragogy project. Like, could we take it, um, could we set one up? Would we want to set one up? Like, for example, we could set up a, a collaborative exploration of LaTeX, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, Sign me up. Cool, OK. Just to say, uh, you said you had the phrase scaffolding learning. I was wondering if you want, if, uh, if you meant scaffolding engagement. That could be. Uh, I, you know, some of these are very fiddly. Um, I, yeah, and the other thing is, okay, so you know, again, it's part, partly to do with the audience. I mean, they're teaching teachers, so you get lost in these loops of, of you know, who's scaffolding who and what's re who's reflecting on what and all this. When kind in of stuff. doubt, make it really plain and simple. Yeah, so I think there's going to be some work to do there. Um, now maybe going on to this MOOC thing. All right, I give it to class. Um, have okay. fun, good meeting everybody. Look forward to catch up I'll soon. I'll call you, Charlie. Yeah. Okay, okay. Ciao. Wow. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you, Matthew. Thanks for coming. Yeah, cool. Look forward to seeing you again. Peace. Uh, Paolo, do you, you could t tilt your uh, camera down a little tiny bit. Oh, we I'm sorry. <laughs> I put my two-year-old photo on in case instead of my 
<laughs> okay, so I did a little search in any place. Whoops. I'm sorry, I'm kind of multitasking, so I'm not really um, following quite as. Um, anyway, so, but Paolo, it sounds like you know a lot about this kind of stuff, or you've used it already, so I was a little, <laughs> I was a little sad because I thought, oh, well, here's this fantastic thing for Paola, um, but she knows all about it, okay. Um, I just took all of those methodologies because it's part of our training here. Okay. So what do you, what do you think about them, and what, what's your experience with that? Well, uh, I personally have a problem with well, or had a problem with PBL, but but it's me, it's the way I learn. But I think works for students that are like um, that that have a lot of motivation and things to uh, that are willing to do things, and it it works for a group of students, but not for all. I'm okay, not for one student. Yeah, you need a group, I guess. Is that what you're saying? Can, can you say something about, just out of curiosity and briefly, about the kind of students it doesn't work for, or the kind of students it does work for, or, I mean, the well, opportunities example, that are presented by this or something? It works for students that do not need a lot of a structure. Because otherwise they feel like lost, and maybe they think that they are losing time instead of making progress. Um, is it somehow? Do you think it's somehow like very specific for this question of teaching teachers, or is there? Is it something that you really that one could really use with other students in other settings? Because it just seemed to me to be very, you know, in this in this case it was very teacher training oriented. Yeah, for formal formal education, it usually. Yeah. Well, you can use it for in in any space or or environment, but I think it's very common in formal yeah. education. I wonder why. I, I don't know. Maybe because you need a lot of training to like make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make a quick and radical proposition? Okay. Yeah. Defining our problems is solving our problems. Mm, nice one. And that's why it takes a collective effort and why students can be very passionately, viscerally engaged in the process of contributing to that un and see that they actually do importantly contribute to that understanding. Okay. Yeah. I want to I want to get your last name so I can write down that quote from you, but now I'm a little behind. That was a very nice, very nice thing. So, uh, but there's so I think this is the thing. What you're saying is uh, defining our problems. You guys can fill in your own version of that, but I, I think um, it's interesting because this. This thing plays with that issue, right? Like, so they define the structure, but the students individually can kind of choose their their take on on the on the case. You know, they can choose like what is their approach. I mean, it's a little bit. It seems a little bit. Maybe your thing, Paula, where you talked about with the students where they made those films was kind of like more like project-based learning. You know, like they made these films, and some of them were very successful. Some of them were very interesting. Some completely failed and and weren't. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna paste here now. Hmm? Huh? Huh? Mm -hmm. Ah, define your problems, solve your problems. I already put it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um. Okay. Well, so it'll be very interesting to get the uh, opinion 
from Terrell, her, her, her writing, which we'll probably follow up here later on this week, I'm hoping, uh, as, a, as a second part. Um, I think, yeah, I think we want to keep it really simple and, and really useful for people who aren't, try to make it useful for people who aren't necessarily teachers. Yeah, That's maybe. Challenge. And if you want to use this, this text for the handbook, maybe we should make it shorter. Um, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, uh, I'm writing to Ray. <laughs> Um, let's see. So, all right. Yeah, I, I still think we need to make it shorter, and because especially because it's going to double in length. Yes. Uh, yeah. Once we add in the experience report, so, um, so I think yeah, the the key outline is the key questions are, from my point of view, is how can people who are not teachers use this. Um, what do what do they what do they need to know? Um, why, why is it a good idea? Or when when is it a good idea? Um, I mean, Terrell has been to many of these. She's she's been to. Let me see. Maybe she just wrote to me. So let me see. Maybe she even attached her docs. Um, Should we be giving an attribution to the? Oh, it's Peter Taylor. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, yeah. I think she she has sent something, but it's not the most recent version of 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 that other contribution. But basically. Um, it, it seems to work in a certain way, and it seems to be kind of a very emotional process. I think the, the, maybe the difference from what we're doing is that it's not necessarily geared towards producing a collaborative artifact. It's geared towards individual learning, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is, it strikes me, it's you're improving somehow the uh, the thoroughness uh, and your the, the thoroughness of education and creating a uh, means by which uh, people who are interested in learning can be very directly engaged in informing that process and guiding that process of learning toward the things that matter, you know, to them to their serious issues. Yeah. I think that that sounds like a good best case scenario. I would put that still as a question: is how can we use CEs to do da 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 the stuff you just said? Um, when you say no, problem-based learning instead of project-based learning, I think that's one of the ways you ground it. Okay. That this is really about problems. You can have a thousand projects, and that's good too. But uh, when we start talking about problems, we start to approach subjects that we may problems we might share. Yes. Hmm. It's much broader. That's nice. Yeah, and I think that the the continual question that Paola and I have been talking about is like, if you have some students who aren't that, aren't say that motivated, who do need a lot of structure, or who, who want structure, um, how do you entice them to start thinking about you know what what problems and issues? They may need to solve in their lives to, to, to do any collaborative work or to to you know I mean maybe they maybe they don't need to but I think this is you know some very good philosophers basically would agree with what you said it's not just uh, yeah stating the problem is the key thing and that the solution is always very implicit in the stating of the problem so even to recognize that there is a problem absolutely. Okay. Um, 
well. Okay, so we're 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 nearly at the end of an hour. Of course, I joined very late. Um, but um, Matthew, you you have a lot of energy on this topic. Do you do you think you, would you be at all interested in kind of just uh, putting in a session on this at post post the meeting? Maybe Paulo as well. I don't know. I'm not the authority on it. I mean, I think I did. I've satisfied my own urge to make it better by getting rid of the gigantic bullet list, which just drives me up the wall. Uh, but after that, I, I, even having participated in it, I feel like that what I can contribute is is the I'll I'll wrangle the, the second half, and I'll be happy to edit some of the second half. But I think we're probably going to want at least a week of different people weighing in on this to to get it sorted out. So I'd be hope I hope that there are other volunteers. I I mentioned you, Matthew, because you're new and this is a fresh thing to tackle. But don't feel obliged to tackle it if there's other things you'd be more interested in, or if you're just testing the waters, you don't have to feel obliged at all. I am I am fascinated by it. It's, I want to say that I I noticed that uh, there there's been two topics, and the one is seems to be presented here, which has very much to do with introducing pedagogy into a pedagogical format, mm -hmm. where there is a, an instructor, a leader who presents. Uh, the material to a group of students, and so it has all that structure to it. Uh, and then you're saying, well, there's another way that this can be applied. And those just, I want to say, those sound like two different chapters. Mm. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think reading. Is a, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the example from, the, I mean, they're already asked to take the experience report and kind of separate it from the theory bit that we're looking at now. Um, I agree. And I, I think that, you know, um, again, it seems like you have a lot of energy for these issues, and I would love to get you an account on the Purigaji site so you can just start writing or editing or making notes or comments okay. or whatever onto yeah, I'm, uh, I, I, I don't Yeah, I don't know what the deadlines are for the project, and I'm, and I'm definitely uh, have some other things to juggle, but I'm okay. fascinated by this topic. I, I will say that I come from this idea that these sort of pedagogy activities could be activated and joined on in like circles in Google Plus. That potentially there would be a way of creating a uh, dialogue, a sort of scaffolding that would hold uh, a, a dialogue in which we could sort of overcome the the way that comments get lost in the way they're presented now with one statement and then all the comments, there would be a way of sort of horizontally flowing the material so that comments could be directed very specifically to issues and and uh, as things crystallize, I don't, you know, I'm just one. I don't know what that structure is, uh, but allowing people to really uh, not be forced just to respond to where the conversation is, but to see sort of the, the uh, landscape of the conversation and and respond where they are gripped or where they have an insight or where they are interested or you know where they feel their problems and issues their feet they feel like there is a problem or an issue to be spoken to nice yeah I, that sounds good I think we, we do have a little bit like that with planet math uh, and the stack exchange people do a little bit like that as well but I think there's lots more room for things and certainly there's nothing like that whatsoever on Google Plus which is a pity um, yeah, I, uh, I don't even know what the structure of that would be, uh, but it, it's very yeah. much about peer learning. And uh, and and I, I wanted to say, like, when I saw the uh, Google+, Plus, there was all this idea of people becoming more and more influential, and that influence was measured in terms of how many followers you had. <laughs> and that seemed very, right, anti-dialogical. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I think that that's that's the interesting thing about these these systems, and I don't think Stack Exchange is so much better, um, and maybe you know even more about getting points and credit. Here, I'll I'll just it I'll stick this screenshot, sorry, right into the top of the document, just because I think that'll be the easiest place to see it. Um, um, so there you go. On, on this, this is a question on on, on tech.stackexchange.com. I'll put the link as well. I guess that's that's more relevant than the thing. But you see this box here, related. You know, you see this thing that says it's related. I'm not really seeing it. Can I? How do I? 
Do I refresh? Are you, yeah, look on the top of our document. Maybe you need to refresh. Uh, do how do I ref, do I where do I refresh from? I think you could just hit reload. Uh, okay, here I'm a beginner. Uh, I'm still not seeing it. Uh, nope. Okay, you went away. Now you're coming back. It, it should or George went away. He's now coming back. I'm back. Yeah. Okay, where is my reload? Uh, I see these little things, Google. I see the microphone, the camera. Oh, okay, the okay. So on the Google Doc page, rather than in the camera thing, it, yeah. it won't show up in our in our video on that oh, doc. I just did. I just refreshed. I think by clicking it again. But there we go. Yeah, we're not really doing a share screen, so no. Sorry. It's, there it's oh, wait. There I see. Bingo. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So all I'm saying is that this this automatically brings in some related questions and it helps you helps you find your way to related themes a little bit. That's an interesting example, but yeah, completely they don't have that at all on, on, on Google Plus. Yeah, I might have to get this sent to me or something. Or oh, oh you just put, did, can you put it in uh in the comments or just that well, just that? Well, actually, yeah, it's, let's put it. You, you, sh you should have access to that. You know, I'm yeah. looking at the uh, Google Docs and everybody. But me. There's another option, though, which is I'll just put the link. We can skip the screenshot. Oh, no, he's left. I think he was trying to reload this page, which is not a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Because it's on the Google Docs and it's yeah. right now yeah. shared. Publicly. So yeah, but I think okay. Try try this link which we just put into the chat. And you're muted. You're muted now. Matthew, sorry. No. Now you have to click the microphone up above. Hmm. Thank you. Yeah. There Good. you go. Okay. So now hopefully at least see what I was talking about, but. Um, Thank Kyle, you. you've been sitting there so quietly. I, I'm curious to know if any of this is ringing any bells for you in terms of your your platform design, and how's that how's that going? That's gone well. Um, it's pretty much going to have to be fully developed over Christmas or winter break, and it's going to take on kind of like. Have, do you guys know what uh, Kafka's Wound is? It's a digital essay. And this is you'll Joe, you'll be particularly interested in this because this is how my thesis is actually going to look at the mm -hmm. end of it, and it's a non-hierarchical structure. Wow! Uh, really? Because you can go through it in a linear fashion, or you can go through it in a uh, or in a random pick a place. Wow! Uh, okay, for some reason I'm not seeing. Okay, I. Uh, how do I s view the document again, or uh, how do I see this? Oh, I put the uh, oh the Kafka's wound document. Kafka's wound, yeah. Oh, yeah, I put it in the comments. Okay. You have to click the little blue comment chat box that will make Got that it. appear. Then click onto that. Looks nice. nice. I okay, this feature is now disabled. Mm. Uh oh. Hmm. Well, that that actually looks like uh, what was known as the visual thesaurus at one time. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then and then Apple had another thing that they called the X system, um, where it's and then Pearl Trees is another uh, social system that works that same way. But if you click if you click into the document, you get these cool little. Uh, Little extra features on the right, like you can you get these little extra. I don't know what the key is, but you click on these little things and it it opens up little windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like you get your references right there in line in German even. Wow. Auf Deutsch. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I see. It's a very interesting setup. And Will Self is fairly famous. Why is he so famous? Maybe he would want to uh, comment on our book. I don't know. This is Will Self. I'm looking forward to working on this, and I can already see working on this, this kind of digital essay. 
that the, the He's talking to way us, in huh? which collaboration is coming up strongly. The way in which collaboration is coming up strongly. In terms of the way in which I think about what I'm doing. Wow. Well, there we go. North London. Well, I don't suppose I'm going to be able to just go get an appointment with him to chat. Uh oh. Is anyone else here? Yes. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Happy. <laughs> yeah. Probably moving. Well. Cool. So you're going to be very busy thinking about that and building it, huh? Yeah, and it's going to be interesting getting the developers to think like this, because they're so used to conventional like websites. But I, I sent it to them, and they said that. It, doesn't, it shouldn't be too hard. Um, and just the idea of trying to incorporate collaboration within the structure of the website, too. Um, I would love to see what you're... I would, I'm so looking forward to seeing what you're talking about. Yeah, it's a thesis I'm doing for teaching um, writing online. And it's going to be like a type of collaboration process in which that the main text that teaches like that aspect of writing is not going to be an authority. It's but there's going to be fields in which people can comment on it or critique it as well. And it, that the main text can change as a result of that. So that's interesting to me you have two categories, commenting and critiquing and it, mm -hmm. and it seems like that's it's how we, in what direction we go from the stated material. The better we can identify the directions we go, I think the better we can know how to, how to group them in ways that are constructive or something, mm -hmm. something you know, to, yeah, to turn it into a dialogue. Yes, exactly. And I just have a monolithic piece of information there. Cool. So, by the way, here's here's a link for something as a bit of prior art, which maybe maybe you guys can use. Where'd you go here? This this thing is yeah, compendium is very nonlinear. This annotator is a bit more text oriented. Um, OKFMLabs.org/annotator okay, is a kind of it looks a little bit like this will self thing. I'm not sure how well this particular thing works. Well, actually, Joe, I, I won't go into a deep conversation now, but I've mm. done training with Compendium. Mm -hmm. Been trained by uh, Jeff Conklin on Wicked Problems. Okay. And it is multi-dimensional, and you can include um, recursive type linkings, and you can link um, topic areas to or to separate topic areas or one map to another map. Yep. Um, so it's it it becomes a rather complex thing. This I, one I, yeah. bounces around with animation at the top. No, that 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 part of it is true. That the visual part of the top is very similar to Compendium. And I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I like it. I guess all I'm saying is it's a little it's a little more complicated than what this example was. Kyle pointed out, but yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a good reference, and the people who made it are right down the hall from me. So if you want, oh, okay. <laughs> if you want to uh, talk with them, yeah. I can probably help help arrange that. Um, cool. All right. Well, is there anything else anyone else needs to to get out there and talk about or well, share with, with people? Well, I, I I did ask the question in the chat box. Kyle, is this um, digital essay engine proprietary. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you rephrase that? I'm just. I'm having well, a brain fart. Well, I mean, how does how is is the creation of these kind of documents, these online documents, uh, the tools necessary to create them available to anybody, or is this just a uh, developers uh, showcase. Uh, the tool should be available to everyone. I'm trying to keep it as open as possible. 
and, and it, the, the actual development of the website, I'm really developing the theory right now, and I, I don't like theory in vacuum. I always want to practice okay. some sort of praxis going on. So uh, the actual development, though, I could talk more about probably over winter break. Okay. My daughter works at the Center for History and New Media mm -hmm. at George Mason. And they have a close link with the Scholars Lab at University of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And they're working on a number of tools for researchers and academics, as well as public museums and other informal learning spaces. And uh, you may have heard of Zotero yeah. or, or Omeka. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, this is would be an interesting extension of that. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, these are interesting things. I mean, I think uh, if it's conceivable, for example, that that if we get if Kyle's thing gets done and it remains like open source and we can use it, I mean, WordPress is open source, although that's not the critical feature of why we chose it. I think we chose it because it was easy. But you know, if we could make a really cool interactive version of the handbook, this could that could be kind of. Uh, Test, you know, test case two for the platform, or maybe even, you know, it could even be a motivating example. I know, Carly, you were thinking about trying to get some collaborative aspects into your, uh, into your work, and thinking about Puragaji as a case study. It could well be that, you know, we've got all this content, we've got a community, but our tools are kind of like, eh, you know, it's just a blog, you know, not that attached to it. Um, mm -hmm. it. It could be that we would sort of participate in that process, doing some work. Um, or just turn it over to you and let you and, and other people play with it and, and remix it in this other tool. Um, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know if we could get uh, the Brett family in on the, on the thing, <laughs> at the family dinner, we can get them doing it. Mm -hmm. um, could be fun. Well, the problem is the daughter is also working on a PhD while we're, and she'll start her full-time job She's been a research associate there um, in January, so um, it might be a little while. But their emphasis is on digital humanities and peer learning and open source. Sounds like sounds like intersection is is pretty big with what Kyle's doing. So yeah, it would be yeah. wonderful. It sounds uh, right up my alley. If if we could invite her on on one of these Monday things, if you could convince mm -hmm. her to come along, that'd be really fun. I'll do what I can. Or if not, if not her, at least um, ask her with her buds to watch it at George Mason. Yeah, yeah, because these all are all saved thanks to Charlotte. Charlotte, are you saying goodbye? Yes, we can hear you. We can see you, but we can't hear you. No. Don't know why. Thought I heard you for a minute. <laughs> How cool. Um, Verizon, maybe. Uh, maybe you, can you hold up a sign that says what you want us to want us to know? Change your lower thirds. We'll we'll read it with a microscope. I think she's frozen now. She has a question for Kyle. <laughs> Hmm. That's a nice one. So can can we rate? So let's say people are contributing comments, etc. Yeah, kind of like flash dot is the classic example. No rating, then uh, how do we know what's useful to people and what's not? Um, and so I think if there is a rating system, it could help us understand what is more useful or what people find more helpful as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, can you hear me now? 
Yeah. So, yeah. I wanted to say something about uh, uh, just quickly that sometimes it's context that makes a particular comment especially relevant. Mm -hmm. And so it's the if we take the comments out of context completely, they may not be as useful. And if we're going to value comments, if we're going to rate comments, it ha somehow that has to be taken to keep them in. Yeah, we might lose context. Yeah, like a comment thread. Like how some comments are structured, uh, like the first comment, and then it's almost like a outline. Yeah, like a punch. You know, like some comments are like punchlines, and and uh, mm -hmm. and 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 synthesize. You know, some of them synthesize material. It's it would be interesting to to sit down and say, okay, what? Let's look at our. Let's uh, look at a, a comment string, and let's see what the best comments are for us, and talk about how they work in the comment string, and see. If we can characterize how what's happening on some level, and 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 so and sort of parse what this human instinct dialogue process is. Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah, taking it out of context could potentially be bad. Well, one of the things, like I said before, and this is my own bias, is that. Um, I recognize that I'm among a, a group of academics here, but I think that Speak for <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, but I think that this the concepts here um, have great value both to corporate environments. As, as well as uh, um, even small community organizations, you know, and, and in other words, the informal types of folks. And so um, that's what's had me excited. And, you know, I know folks have heard me say this before, so I'm just repeating it for Kyle and Matthew, that if I seem to go kind of, Hi, I'm Rich from the Team Lumio. This is a quick tutorial. Sorry. <laughs> team Linear, right? It's a serial interface to help with parallel computing. Sorry, back to. <laughs> so anyway, that's one. Yeah. Notion. When you when you do, and I'm responding uh, more or less to the notion of. Um, Adding value, you know, to the comments, you know, the ranking of them, you know, maybe there should be two ranking systems. One is, is you know, the, the academic or research value, and then the other one would be uh, a general collaborative or a general learning value for lifelong learners. Nice. There's a. Oh, um, I'll find. Speaking of academics, I have something else quite relevant to that. Um, here. I wanted to com comment about that idea of the comments, the different kinds of comments. I noticed that when I'm reading, uh, I wish I uh, just uh, like a book. Uh, I wish that I had an, an, a, a more elaborated system of quick notations, a kind of shorthand, so that when I went back into the book, I could tell something about the character of what excited me about the comment. So oh. I can know oh, this comment is this kind of, you know, yeah. Like almost like a color coding type? Yeah, yeah, and, and yet uh, somehow very integrated into kind of the structure, something very structurally understanding to see, oh, this is, this is rel try to understand why these comments are important to me, particularly and in a kind of categorical way. Mm -hmm. Yes. See that book? No one here. ALH. Tiny, tiny, it's just tiny. Yeah, well, it's less than three inches long, right? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, or it's wide at the base. 
marginalia. Wow. <laughs> and it's oh, awful. by the way, it was given to Helen in 1896. Wow. <laughs> and it's Dante's Inferno. And okay, are you ready for this? <laughs> Look at that marginalia. Wow. So, um, show it again. Oh, let's see. <laughs> page. What a great word. Well, here's one. Uh, and she, talking about temperance is the head. And then there's bullet points on temperance there. Nice. Nice. And that's all within, like, you know, three <laughs> inches and a half inches deep, you know. Um, does anybody know the, uh, the, the pragmatist uh, by the name of Charles Pierce? Why is that familiar? Oh, because Charlotte. I'm sort of a pragmatist. <laughs> well, yeah. But Pierce did a whole thing on, on notations as well in, in an analog sense. And you know, maybe the thing, you know, which Kyle has hit on is, is, is a better method for uh, the digital notation. Um, I've used various online ones over the years, and I like what I saw just in 30 or 40 seconds of what you've done or what's being done with uh, the Kafka's wound process. What's, what's going on with the peer-to-peer -peer university, Joe? Oh, I haven't paid any attention to anything going on with them for a year, probably. And I yeah. Saw they look so much less stressed in my life. Anyway, uh, <laughs> someone should reconnoiter with them. Um, I guess speaking of Massachusetts, uh, the Philip Schmidt is there in M is at MIT or something at the Media Lab, where he has been for a long time. So someone, one of you guys, could wander over and ask him what's going is on. Is he the peer learning person? Yeah, he's like the head of that. He's still there. Peter Schmidt? Uh, Philip Schmidt. Okay, well, we should probably wrap up here. If, uh, unless Kyle, you guys want to just continue. Could, could Kyle, uh, would you mind in the chat window putting your email address? Oh, no, not at all. Thank you. Where did Joe go? <laughs> I hope I didn't kill him. <laughs> I still think we need to have a a break or a retreat in New Mexico. I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where should we go? I mean, can you? But I need to do bake sales to get there or something. Bake sales. <laughs> yeah. Not book sales, but bake sales. <laughs> right. <laughs> You know, bake sales, I, I've been involved in a couple of bake sales lately, and we sold out at our ho church holiday fair, mm. like $400 worth of sugar and flour and nuts. <laughs> it was crazy. We could have one a week, $400 a week. Not bad. I'm ready. Not bad. I am way Not ready bad. for that. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had some pretty good snacks at our last Dipney meeting. Okay. Um, so, are you guys wanting to continue, or uh, I have to go to? Yeah, I think I as well. Well, that's a really fascinating uh, thing that you <coughs> are working on a project. Yeah, hopefully it's successful. But even in failure, we learn something. Oh, but, that's... <laughs> so, well, the thesis, so the thesis should be interesting if by the end. you that concept, you've succeeded. In it's life. a great direction. It's just a great direction. <laughs> it looks wonderful. It's okay. got great eye candy, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I'll talk cool. in the chat. Okay, we're going to wrap up this session of the Puragaji Editing Handbook. Um, okay, and I would be open to having a conversation too, you know, like in a non-editing capacity. Uh, uh, Joe was saying, like, you know, we could, if, if you want to talk about it or something, you know, I'm glad to. Yeah, you, we could just 
do a little ad hoc um, hangout parties. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think Joe's gone, but I'm going to stop the broadcast. And um, we're, we are um, we generally meet every Monday at one Eastern time. I think that's GMT minus five, isn't it? So yeah. if if there's anybody watching now that would like to join us next Monday, December fourth, um, you're welcome to. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> happy uh, U.S. Thanksgiving. To you. Before we end, can I just say, Kyle, I am so psyched to look at what you're working on. Can can I get a link from you or something or? Yeah, it um, it's not built yet. So I don't have any like product. It's what did they I'm, show you? What did you show them that they're all commenting on? Oh, it's the uh, the Kafka's wound. If you just Google it, it's a like a digital yeah. essay by somebody. Cool. Yeah. And before yeah, we go, um, George, could you capture the um, chat since you're so good at that? I just sent you a copy. Oh, thank you. Uh, my yeah. husband always.